Well, welcome back. This is Julie Barron, host of the Seven Figure Builder Show, and I'm here today with my friend Evan Schalfin. Hey, Evan. Hey. <laughs> and I am so thrilled to talk with you today. I know you're the CEO and founder of Luxhammer. You've worked on unforgettable, ridiculous films, TV, branded entertainment. You are like the master creativity genius, and I want to dig into that today. But welcome, and tell us a little bit about you know what you do with your business. Yeah, definitely. So um, thanks for the awesome intro. We're a film and TV and marketing company, and we help brands grow and reach over a billion people. We work with personal brands to Fortune 500 companies and help them to achieve their goals without the expense of major ad agencies by creating content that moves the needle through the power of storytelling. And you're 22 times more likely to remember something that's told in story form so we treat your target audience, your target market like an audience, and we ideate and we produce the content that resonates with your target at a deeper level to meet your goals. Awesome. I love that. And yeah, it's so true with storytelling. It's just how our brains are wired and how we're wired as human beings that, you know, we, we resonate with things that are more in story format. But how did you get into this world? Like, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so I actually started when I was five years old and playing with my Legos and my dad's video camera, making stop motion movies. And I, I continued to make movies with my friends as a hobby uh, throughout uh, school. And um, I always saw it as exactly that, a hobby, not a serious career path. And um, I also put on benefit events in high school and in college. One of them was for the Bonnie, Bonnie Raitt's Rhythm and Blues Foundation. And um, we continued to put on events in college. And one of the events I put on, the host of it was a screenwriter and actress uh, and her name is Evelina Fernandez. She saw the work I'd done producing that event, and uh, she knew I was interested in film and asked if I wanted to help produce her next movie. So I was 22 years old and got that opportunity that I couldn't believe, uh, and I jumped right in head first, and that was really my first opportunity to do film school before film school. And then I decided to go back and get a degree in it and get my MFA over at USC and uh, go to their Peter Stark producing program. And then from there, that kind of launched my career. I love it. And that that's so cool. I think so many of us have kind of fallen head first in the things that we love almost by accident. <laughs> that tends to be, I think, the best ways to get there, at least from my own opinion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it, you know, it, it by accent or by design, you know, we we definitely wanted to incorporate people from the entertainment community when we were putting on that event, and um, and that was such a great way, way to spotlight the issue um, that we were we we were doing, and the I I, I knew that by doing that it would open up some doors and it wasn't intentional that I was trying to leverage that into a job within the industry, but it certainly didn't hurt. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and I know you've worked on some amazing projects. Can you share with some of us, share with us some of the more memorable ones that you can think of? Yeah, definitely. So I worked on movies uh, that you may know, such as Moneyball, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo that David Fincher directed, uh, The Irishman, uh, and uh, the miniseries The Night Of, which was on HBO, awesome. and uh, ma many more. I was the uh, executive in charge of uh, developing and producing film and television based on Sega's video games as well for about eight years. Awesome. Very cool. And in those roles, you need some serious creativity, like obviously with the storytelling, with the visuals and the production, all of that. But how how do you find your sources of creativity? 
Yeah, it's it's a really good question. You know, one one source I, I always think about is, you know, it's really important just in general to be curious and the creativity I really look at as something where you combine two disparate ideas and that really requires exploring the world around you. And that could be look reading a lot, you know, reading books, traveling, you know, it's going into nature, watching other movies and series and, you know, experiencing theater, dance, sports, reading science journals. It could be historical accounts, uh, attending talks and conferences, literally really anything that could spark your imagination uh, and experiencing um, really uh, a lived experience and really trying to understand who we are as people. And I think that's really what is key to understanding what makes us tick. Definitely. Yeah. Cause the more you, you pull in that human element, the more people can relate to it and the more it resonates with them. Yeah. And that. it helps you to get outside your own head and look at things through a different lens when you're, especially when you're traveling, I think that makes a big difference because mm -hmm. you're seeing through other people's eyes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say, how do you, so that's how you pull in creativity, but how do you stay creative? <laughs> like through all these years, you know, do you run out of inspiration or how do you spark that in yourself? Yeah, I do. I make a creative habit. So really that means uh, each day coming up with a certain time and place where I make that sacred to be creative. And for me, that is at the crack of dawn before any distractions and uh you know just having that time where i can i've just woken up and i've had uh you know maybe still in a dream state a little bit and it, it spending even just uh, an hour or an hour and a half each day and forcing myself in the beginning because it's it's like exercising you know sometimes when you first start it's it's not easy and you have to exercise that creative muscle and keep doing it and then as you keep doing it it actually becomes easier your mind starts going to places that you didn't expect and unlocking a whole wealth of creativity so uh continuing that uh, and having that space that you give yourself, uh, I think, is really the perfect way to continue that and be creative. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And I think a lot of us forget about that or don't don't think about being intentional about that creative time. But I know for myself, I did professional photography for a while, and that was very much a learned skill. I started from literal scratch, <laughs> like taught myself photography, went to train under some of the best photographers. And at one point, just to kind of add on to your story there, but at one point, you know, this master photographer was saying, well, the first, when you're posing people is what we were talking about. And I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure. But, you know, the first handful of pictures that you're going to take are crap, frankly. So like, just take them, get rid of it. And then you dig a little deeper in your creativity. And I ended up learning just a hack kind of similar to you where I didn't do it first thing in the morning, but as I was driving the photo shoots, I would literally safely driving <laughs> picture posing people, right. And like run through, basically run through those shots in my mind on the way to the shoot. And so my brain was already teed up and wired to like, okay, I've already thrown away the first bunch of crappy, you know, <laughs> arrangements in my mind. And so now I can actually get on with the good stuff. So I found that very helpful for myself. Yeah, and you you mentioned something about you know that first attempt being uh, total crap, and I I call that writing your vomit draft. <laughs> right, <know>? exactly. <laughs> it, it's really important to do that. You just get it all out on the page or get it all out there, and not be afraid to just do it. And don't turn on your critical mind until after you're done. Get it all out because once you turn on that critical part of your brain, 
then you're going to start analyzing it and picking it apart and you'll never get it done. Yeah. So you really have to let it flow. Totally. I know. I know. And I always found like two thirds of the way through the photo shoot, I'm like really turned on like creativity wise and it's, I'm getting more, you know, daring in what I'm trying to do. And it, the more you do it, like you said, you know, the easier it gets, the more you kind of get in that groove. Yeah, definitely. And, and also just finding that key, that thing, that reason why that speaks to, you know, why you're doing it is so important. Uh, whatever you're working on, you know, it, whatever you're creating and the, the, it's true about uh, anything, you know, with a movie, but it's also or a TV show, but it's true about business. You know, when you're creating something, you really have to have that reason, deeper reason why. And that is what kind of lights that fire in your belly and creates that passion, you know, and that, that reason you get up in the morning. And when you find that key, it really ignites um, uh, that, that feeling and allows you to, uh, when you're having a bad day or you're going through the struggles of uh, entrepreneurship or leadership within your company, uh, it allows you to always go back to it and say, this is why I'm doing this. And I think that also is really important when you're, when you're building anything. A hundred percent. And I'm curious, what would you say that your why is like, have you come to that, that clarity of realization for yourself? Yeah, there's, there's really two, two ways I look at it. One is uh, the way I look at story. And that's uh, what I, the two key ingredients within the story, which I call truth and spectacle. So the spectacle is the thing that gets people to watch it. And then truth is tapping into something about who we are as people and exploring that through their actions and the choices they make, the obstacles they have to overcome. Uh, and the other thing is really my reason why I tell stories in the first place. And it's really to help make the world a better place and, uh, and to help other people to make the world a better place. And so if I can help individuals, if I can help companies, if I can help, you know, it really could be at any scale, uh, that's that's really my modus operandi. Yeah, no, I love that. And thank you for making the world a better place because <laughs> we all need to do that. <laughs> and I love that, that truth and spectacle. Like I think back to the movies that I've loved, you know, through the years and there is that, that truth of something that resonates on the human nature and like, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. And the spectacle is, you know, what what draws you in and what you see in the trailers and like, what is that that attention grabber? Um, so I think that's really cool how you put that. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, yeah, and obviously getting creative feedback is always part of the process too. It's important to uh, be able to get and give, learn to give good feedback. Uh, and I like to equate it to being an auto mechanic in a way. And, you know, oftentimes in companies, we're working with creatives and to give feedback that's constructive, you really have to learn the a way that's going to be beneficial to them. And so I've sort of developed different methodology that, you know, you're, you wouldn't, if you receive something, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I don't like this. But if you were uh, an auto mechanic and you received a car from someone, you wouldn't say, oh, I don't like your car. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> You, you would open up and look under the hood and see what's working, what's not, and be able to make a recommendation, a diagnostic, and, uh, and be able to help them to see what, uh, what can be done. 
and and go from there. And the more that you learn uh, about what they do, the better that you can diagnose the problem. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So having someone that does that on your team sometimes, if you don't do it yourself, is really important. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And being in tune to to what's lying underneath that, not necessarily like the wrapping paper, it's what's inside. But yeah. And I'm curious, you mentioned about business, but how how have you seen storytelling relate to business? Like what are some ways that you use it in business? Yeah, definitely. From our perspective, it's really uh it's really integral to, to business and it's such an important way to uh, to tell stories and communicate messages uh, across business. Uh, and we've done it in so many different ways. Um, you know, we've communicated messages, you know, I've been fortunate to work with companies like JW Marriott, for example, and uh, I produced this Jackie Chan style action heist comedy for them, and, and which people did not expect <laughs> the JW Marriott to do. Uh, our goal was to change brand perception from a place that was a bit stodgier to a place that uh, at the time millennials would be interested in hanging out at. And so we worked with this incredible group called Substance Over Hype, a, a group of movement-based artists off of YouTube. And you know, they've everywhere from dancers to people who had done stunts on the Spider-Man movies and you know, every kind of movement, uh, you, you name it. And what was really cool is that we worked with them and you know created... Uh, a script and a story and it incorporated organically the brand's philosophy within the story mm -hmm. and the the philosophy really uh, paraphrasing but the company really is about the employees going to great lengths to serve their customers and in this case it was hyperbole it was two bell hop stopping an art heist from happening <laughs> <laughs> but it showcased in a very fun way what the company was really about and it ended up getting 250 million media impressions wow. globally and 34 million dollars in earned media value wow. so it was a massive hit for them uh and it was something that it raised uh, search 65% uh, year on year. And the brand sentiment went up 2% months of its target demo. So it was nice. certainly something that worked. But being able to tell uh, a fictional story in that case was a really cool way to communicate the brand message and to do what instead of your typical brand video, so to speak, it was something that was really special. It sounds like it. And it sounds like it definitely stood out amongst, you know, all the other videos out there. So an enraging success and some awesome ROI. So congrats on that for sure. Thank you. Yeah. And recently I got the opportunity to work with a startup named, uh, called Supermouth, and they're actually uh, oral healthcare brand. And um, they wa basically wanted to um, work uh, to get kids to brush their teeth. Uh, and so uh, the whole thing that we created for them was this whole branded entertainment universe. And so we did a film for them and it was this really cute family adventure that it was kind of like a Marvel meets the Incredibles sort of superhero adventure uh, that incorporated, uh, you know, brushing teeth and we so we made the film and then we uh, we also did 
uh, all kinds of other content. We launched it as a film at a film festival. We had a premiere at the film festival. We actually did a live event and we took characters that were in the movie and the kids got to meet the characters That's and awesome. be involved in the story as it continued and uh, helped defeat the bad guy, Cavatar, <laughs> who was <laughs> spreading sugar bugs throughout the lobby and uh, in the theater and, um, and to defeat him. And uh, we created, we commissioned a song for the movie and created a music video and even did a comic book. And so we pushed all this out in PR uh, and it reached uh, just over 1 billion unique visitors monthly across media. Wow. So for a startup to be able to reach that level is uh, pretty, uh, pretty mind blowing. So we were very fortunate. And just think of how many more clean teeth are out there because of that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that that was my favorite thing was seeing the smiles on kids faces when they were watching the film and and how many of them were overjoyed to get to play with the 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 products from the client. <laughs> yeah. Right. At, at the screening and, uh, you know, the, getting toothbrushes and floss, which was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> So I'm curious for your storytelling process. Like, are there, you know, tips or things that you can share with us? I mean, I've worked with massive agencies through the years where we're doing like sticky notes and storyboarding and like, you know, or journaling or like what, what things have you found work really well? Yeah, it begins with uh, what I call a brand immersion meeting and really getting to know, I ask a lot of questions of the brand to get to know them and to understand what makes them tick. Uh, it, it requires really just understanding as if I worked at the company and I could be able to say, um, you know, be able to speak uh, whatever to, to whatever the company's biggest challenges are especially from a marketing perspective and to understand uh, what is going to uh, communicate whatever message they're trying to communicate. And then, um, and then coming up with uh, a solution that's going to ultimately achieve that marketing objective and that creative spark can you know, come like I was talking about earlier, can come from anywhere, but oftentimes I'll go through 300 different ideas in one day and then whittle that down to 30 in the next day and then whittle that down to three that we actually present to the client. Um, I know that when we worked with Japan Airlines, it was one of those opportunities where I was creative director and I, I had... Uh, a uh, opportunity to come up with an idea to help raise awareness for uh, the airline outside of Japan, uh, where they had said that they had zero awareness. And so we uh, were creating this global campaign and I wanted to create this global artwork. And I had a inkling of an idea of how to do it and so i basically looked at, at several different artists and i came across a perfect brand ambassador and this japanese artist named yasan and he had traveled all across japan back a few years before our campaign by foot by bus by train however he could and tracked his gps data and it's he uploaded that to Google Maps, spelled out the words marry me across all of Japan. And so <laughs> that's how he proposed his girlfriend at the time, which wow. was pretty incredible. And put everyone who had ever proposed to anyone to shame. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> like the ultimate. <laughs> so fortunately, um, she said yes. <laughs> so cut to a couple years later. 
and we gave him the opportunity to break the world record that he had set uh, and this time travel uh, and break his world record 14 times over traveling to 34 stops worldwide across six continents, meeting people in each of the stops who would push the button on his phone to activate the next leg of his journey. And he tracked his GPS data on his flights. And he uh, traveled around the world in 41 days, mind you, which is incredible upon itself, and then got home showed his family his two adorable children and his wife uh, uh he uploaded the data to google earth and it spelled out the word peace mm -hmm. so the campaign was peace on earth and that's wow. how uh he what he shared this message um from him and japan airlines to raise awareness and you could follow the entire journey on social media and his travels and that was something that that took uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of you know uh ideation but you could kind of see my creative process going from okay well we have to do something big how are we going to do this how and along the way thinking about okay how are we going to actually pull this off <laughs> and it went to uh uh a practical place and then searching and finding the way to do it and then once we found that then it became a very big logistical challenge to actually work with Japan Airlines to figure out, okay, how are we going to get him on all these different flights? <laughs> and how are we going to book his travel and uh, and send our, our small team around the world to follow him and document his journey? That's awesome. And to what you mentioned earlier, just that the sheer volume of ideas that you go through to begin with and scrap and then whittle it down to the good ones and then the really good ones I think so often we're so hard on ourselves that like the first idea sucked. Okay, forget it, right? Like we need to shift our perception and and um, focus, you know, to be able to give us room to come up with those, the garbage <laughs> you were talking about before, like without being critical on ourselves to get to the, the gems that come later. Yeah, absolutely. And I always encourage my team to do the same thing to to not be precious with especially with campaigns not to be precious with ideas because uh ideas uh are are just that and at the end of the day it's the execution that really makes a difference yeah for sure and i'm curious i mean you've got these massive campaigns that have been super successful and have accomplished amazing things but what does success look like to you yeah, um, that's actually a fantastic question. Um, you know, I, I, I've thought a lot, I've actually thought a lot about that. Um, and for me, I would say you can have all the stuff in the world, but true success to me is really being able to form lasting memories with yourself and your loved ones. I think that that's something that you can have all this stuff, but you're, you can lose stuff, but keeping those memories and being able to cherish them is really something that I love to hold on to. That's success to me. I love that. Is there a particular memory that strikes a chord with you? Uh, well, definitely my, uh, my proposal and getting married to my wife, uh, uh, and, um, getting this there's certain memories with 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 my dad and, and my mom as well and my family that i i hold on to yeah that's awesome i love it and i'm curious if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes what would you tell them um i i would that's that's an excellent question too um i i would tell them 
I would tell them that you have there's there's this acronym that someone had come up with uh and uh, it's actually from uh, a friend named chris winfield uh, and the acronym is hope and it stands for help one person every day and i love to live by that i i, I love that acronym and if each person tried to do that and help one person every day, I think that would definitely help to make this world a better place. Absolutely. Now it's a powerful message. And I, in a very tiny, teeny little way, I, uh, I went to Duncan the other day and I make it a practice every time I go to Duncan, almost every time I always pay for the person behind me. Like, I don't know the person don't care. Just always pay for them. And it was like a week ago, I went and the person in front of me paid for me again, complete stranger. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, it doesn't often happen the other way around. So you never know how far that circle came back around to, you know, to bless my day. So yes, I like that a lot. That's incredible. I love that story. Yeah. So how can people find you? How can they work with you? Like, how can they connect with you online? Yeah, they can find me via my website, luxhammer.com. That's L-U-X-H-A-M-M-E-R.com. And they can also find me on social media. Uh, Instagram's easiest. It's just Luxhammer LLC. Um, also on LinkedIn, Evan Shalton. Um, So uh, any way you want to reach out to me is fine. I uh, carry your pigeon. That works too. <laughs> <laughs> smoke signals take them all that's right <laughs> awesome well thank you evan for being on today this was well really a lot of fun to chat with you yeah likewise thank you so much for having me yeah absolutely and if you found value in this episode please do share it that's how people find us and you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com and i will see you on the next episode